Hey everyone, in today's Let's Be Frank, we're talking about Fiertress, an early access game that you may not have heard of yet. The developer gave me an opportunity to check it out, and though it wasn't my usual style of game, there were some pleasant surprises along the way. The first thing I noticed and appreciated was the visual style. There's a lot of aspects here that are very simple, but detailed enough to garner my respect for the handmade art. The name of the game, sounding a bit like Tetris, I figured there'd be some puzzle aspect at play here, and my original peek at the trailer gave me the impression the building placement would be a more strategic thing, similar maybe to like Triple Town. I was surprised to see that neither of those assumptions were true. Fiertress, in my opinion, is a game that I can best compare to idle type games, something more like Melvor Idol, with a lot of unique concepts. For better or worse, most of the game is spent waiting for your resources to increase. You start with wood and stone, and eventually through building up a town, you can expand into more resources, iron, equipment, and more. Each of those resources get used on buildings, upgrades, and units. There's a balancing act here you need to strike to make sure you have enough food for your growing population which itself is one of those resources you manage too. At any given time, you're typically waiting on the next thing that you can afford. You might be waiting on your population size to assign jobs to conscript an army unit, or waiting for enough lumber to spend it on upgrading lumber milling technology so you can get lumber faster later. The experience isn't fully idle. There's world events that take place which can potentially force you to have to adapt where your villagers are assigned, for example production can suddenly have a massive percentage change in production, and you don't want to cause a famine. That may not be the full scope of possible world events, but the production variances were really the only memorable events that I came across in my playtime. I like that it's easy to see most of the production values at a glance, especially when they can change abruptly. I also like that if you're waiting to see how long it's going to be until you can build something or click something, there's also a little timer letting you know how long that wait is going to be as well. That was a great addition, and there's a lot of little subsystems like this to make the experience more enjoyable and straightforward. For example, you choose between good and evil, which adds a skill tree system to unlock holy or unholy buildings and units as you progress. There's an inventory system, an equipment system, which may sound like a surprise in a game like this, but it's there and it works well as a reward and customization system. The biggest gripes I have are with the combat system, and this is where I felt like the percentages on screen weren't really accurate to what I was seeing take place. It was like things were a decimal point off. Each of the battles lasted far longer than they should have, though at least you're fighting in the background, so to speak. You're still able to play normally after launching an assault. As one of these battles take place, you can watch it in a little side window until it's over. It's a turn-based, one-hit kill kind of system. Your team goes first, so there's a big advantage to going into each battle with a full army once you can afford the food and other costs to maintain that. The battle itself isn't something you can interact with after starting it, but if you win, it'll clear a space on the board you can utilize, as well as drop some equipment and cash as well. If the space you cleared out allows a straight line of sight to a treasure chest on the map, you might even get yourself a rarer piece of equipment as well. The balance of the shop system for coins felt a little odd at first, though stuff in there looks to be permanent unlocks that'll follow you from map to map. There's not a ton of options in there right now, and there's a very steep price hike on some of the stuff, considering that battles don't really net you a ton of cash. However, when you can finally afford things, there's new types of army units, new buildings, and game elements like UI features that can be opened up eventually as you go along. All in all, while this game isn't much of a strategic challenge, I feel the folks who are looking for something casual might find themselves really enjoying Fiertress. For being an initial release from a new developer, and a game type outside of what I typically enjoy, it was a nice little change. The limited interaction here has the advantage too of being a game that might be more comfortable than others if you wanted to play it on a touch screen or something like that as well. I could see this one maybe being possible to be on mobile devices for the same reason. Anyway, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed my first look at Fiertress, which is set to be released very soon. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.